everybody, it's Kaylee. If you're new here, I am a reseller on eBay and Poshmark. I sell mainly clothing and shoes that I find at thrift stores. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some strategies that I plan on using in my reselling business for 2020. let's jump in. I have thought a lot about what I want to do with my reselling business for 2020. I've seen a lot of other resellers put out videos in the last week or so. I'm kind of like behind um, whatever. I wanted to think on it for a little bit, um, but I wanted to share these with you, some of my goals and strategies that I plan on using to give you guys some ideas for your business. Um, hopefully some of them are ones you've never thought of before and I'm hoping that they can help you. And whether that's becoming more efficient, growing your business, or even just taking a little stress out of your day. So I actually started this um, a couple of months ago, but I haven't been consistent in doing it every day. Um, but I bought a planner for 2020, and what I'm planning on doing with this is holding myself accountable by writing in every single day how many items I listed, um, how many items I cross posted and then if anything was going on that day like a sale or different trends like that um, It's something I used to do when I worked in retail management We would have a calendar and we would mark significant days that way later on um, Next year you could look back and go okay. Well this week was pretty slow Here's why or this week we tend to get pretty busy um, So I don't know. It's just a good a good rule of thumb. It worked really well for me in the past. So I am planning on doing that. I'm also, um, most planners, I'll just show you one of the blank months. Most planners, in addition to having each day set out, they will also have a place on the side here to just write like overall notes. And I'm planning on using that to write down at the beginning of the month, what my listings, my active listing number is. And then at the end of the month, I will do the same. I'm just kind of doing this as a monthly reflection of the work that I put in and if I've been holding myself accountable to do the things that I said I would do every single day. All right, another strategy that I am holding myself accountable to is I need to do like 10 to 30 minutes every day. I'm gonna say 30 minutes, just, just a half hour. I need to dedicate to doing all those things that I did not want to do the previous day um or just things that have been sitting around that i've not been getting to so things like death piles or things like cleaning or um maybe i haven't wanted to go through like double check my inventory and make sure that all the SKUs are correct things like that just really tedious tasks that i've been putting aside and not wanting to do i'm planning on setting aside 30 minutes every day and incorporating this into my daily routine Probably, honestly, the first 30 minutes of my day whenever I start working is probably when I need to do it. Um, so the reason I came up with this is because I, I'm i not a messy person. Organization is not the problem. It's, I just don't want to get to certain things. Like I have a pile like right here. This is my basket of stuff that needs cleaned. And then over here, I've got a basket of stuff that needs repaired. And then... Um, I've also, I mean, I don't really have a death pile. I kind of do. So let's talk about death piles really quick. So the reason I say I don't really have a death pile is because I actually have people that help me list. I've mentioned this in another video, um, but they do help me list here and there. So with these part-time listers, I always have to have inventory on hand to give to them when they are ready for new inventory. So it's not like you know, I don't like listing jeans, so there's a pile of jeans sitting there because I can just give those to my listers. So not wanting to list certain items is not the issue. Um, what does become a death pile for me is I will set things aside that I, not that I don't trust my listers to do, but that I just don't want to burden them with or that I would rather do myself. So things like cleaning, I don't want to give my lister an unclean item with a spot that I think that I'm going to be able to get out because I don't want them to list it with having a flaw and be pricing it that way. 
Other things that I tend to hold on to are bulky large items. I don't really like to give my listers bulky coats because it just takes a lot transporting it and I would just rather keep it here and list the bulky things here. And then the main thing I really like to hold on to, which creates my death piles, are unique items. Items that are really unique and are going to take a lot of research to know what keywords, how to price the item, different things like that. So one example of that, I left this up on purpose. So I don't know if you could tell there's a shirt right here. I will also pop up a screenshot right here of the listing, but I was doing my 30 minutes a day of going through and doing all the things I hadn't got to before. And so I have a small death pile of things that are really unique items that I just haven't got around to listing yet because I have just been so busy in my reselling business. So this is one of those items. So this is an MTV um, vintage 1995. It is dated. Um, Beavis and Butthead graphic shirt. So if you've watched Beavis and Butthead, it probably brings up a little nostalgia for you. But um, it says the great Cornholio on it, which is a funny saying from this, the TV show. Um, but I've been holding on to this. I can't even remember where I picked it up, which is a problem. It's been that long. It's I've moved since I've had this shirt. So I've probably been sitting on this for like, I'm guessing seven to eight months. And it's just been sitting there because I've not been getting to it. So anyways, I found the shirt. I was getting to it today and I was like, I'm going to list this shirt today. So I checked sold comps and I was going through, you know, vintage is a hard thing to check sold comps on for because usually vintage means there's not a lot of them out there. Um, and I found this exact shirt sold in the sold listings for $150. <laughs> This shirt has been sitting in my death pile for months and I've not gotten to it. So that's one of the reasons I am having to incorporate 30 minutes of my day, more than likely going to be the first 30 minutes of my day into my routine to get done those things that are kind of sitting around because there are profits just sitting in a pile. Not to mention that, but it just fogs in my mind having all these piles everywhere. Um, one of the reasons I have a lot of piles is because I like to work in bulk. And so like right here, I mentioned before, this is my basket of things that need wash. See, I'm the type of person that I would like to wait until I had enough to do an entire load of laundry for eBay and then get to it. But I'm realizing that that's just not the best way to go about it. Um, like I said, it's kind of causing me a little bit of stress just seeing all these things everywhere. So I'm going to start getting to them right away. And hopefully at the end of the year, I will not have to spend 30 minutes because they'll already be done. By the way, if anybody is interested in this shirt, I did list it on eBay today. Another goal that I have set for myself for 2020 is I need to start incorporating hard goods into my sourcing routine. I am not very familiar with hard goods. The most of hard goods I've really done are like backpacks, which I still kind of consider clothing because they're like accessories, but I really need to get into um, certain hard goods. I would like to get into electronics, but I'm a little timid. So what I'm going to do, because I don't know much about hard goods, is every time that I source, I'm going to spend the first 10 minutes just perusing through some of the hard goods. If I find something I think might be valuable, I'm at least going to comp it. Maybe it ends up being nothing. Maybe I end up finding something, but I feel like if I get myself into hard goods and start comping items that I think might be valuable, I will start to learn a little bit and be able to start picking up hard goods. That's the way I learned with clothing. I mean, I knew nothing about clothing going into it. Um, you know, I shopped at like a hot topic way back when I first started reselling. So, you know, I didn't know anything about what clothing sold and for how much. So that is just how I learn is just by putting myself out there and starting to do comps on things that I thought were valuable. Speaking of sourcing, another goal I have set for myself in 2020 is to find an online source that is reliable. Lots of things like bulk purchases. So, I have done like mystery boxes and I've ordered different like little lots here and there and I just don't think that they're worth it. I mean, I unfortunately 
don't think it's worth the money. And I, I have done a couple of different mystery boxes from different resellers of used goods and it just never was worth it to me. Like I would rather go out myself and spend that time to go in a thrift store and purchase items. So my goal for 2020 is to find at least one online source that I can go to consistently to find product, even if it's just a small lot of things, just something consistent that I can go to where I can keep inventory coming in without having to actually physically go somewhere. I do realize that if I could get all of my sourcing done online, my business would grow so much. However, I'm trying to be realistic because it is really hard to find wholesale and you know, it takes people years sometimes to develop those relationships. So for 2020, I am committing to finding one. Something else that I've started doing already and has been a game changer is scheduling my listings in advance. So I am currently a couple days ahead. What I would like to do is to be like weeks ahead. I think it's going to take a lot of hard work to get there. But if you didn't know, you can schedule your listing. So if you already have your draft ready in eBay, I'm specifically talking about eBay right now, um, you can have your draft ready and your pictures done, everything ready to go. And instead of hitting list item, you can actually go to, I think it's by where your pricing is. You can actually schedule the listing for a day at a certain time. Now, I don't wanna say if this is something you chose to do, it is in Pacific Standard Time, which I am in the Eastern Time Zone, so I did have to do a little bit of calculating to figure out when I wanted my listings to be set off. But currently I'm doing um, a couple hour intervals. I usually start at 5 a.m. PST um, and then go from two hour intervals from there all the way through to the evening. Um, I'm trying to be more consistent that way. I feel like every two hours is good to keep, uh, you know, SEO active for you in eBay. And so I've been scheduling my listings. I've been getting my drafts in ahead of time and it does cost 10 cents per scheduled listing right now, um, to schedule it in advance. But I mean, you know, I've said it before, that's pennies on the dollar comparing to the stress that I'm saving myself and also the time and the consistency. You know, I have drafts ready to go, but I don't always remember to consistently go in and set them active. I may set one active in the morning and then five hours later realize that I've been so busy I haven't set any active and then I'll have to set like five active at once. And I would rather have them consistent every couple of hours. So I have been scheduling my listings in advance. Again, it is 10 cents per listing, but I mean, if you think about it, if you are scheduling, let's say you like get really good at it and you schedule 100 listings for your week, you're going to set 100 drafts active that week. That's only $10 for all of that time that you would have taken to have to remember to go back in and set your drafts active. So that is something I'm doing. I want to get weeks ahead. Currently, I'm only a couple days ahead, but it's just so nice to not have to worry and freak out because you've not gotten anything listed that day. Also, if things come up, you're not able to list that day, you've already got some active, you don't have to worry about it and you can focus on what's important to you in that moment in your personal life. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna say this for their goals for 2020, but cross-posting is going to be a major goal of mine in 2020. I already cross post from eBay. eBay is my main platform. It's the one that I started on. I already cross post from there onto Poshmark. Since then I have opened up accounts on a couple different platforms, but I'm not consistently cross posting. I'm not even consistently cross posting on Poshmark as much as I would like to. So I've recently opened up an account on Etsy, Mercari, Grailed, and then of course I have my Poshmark. So I don't want to overwhelm myself and I don't want you guys to feel like you need to cross post on every platform because I feel like it can be overwhelming. But this past year, I spent a lot of time with Poshmark and cross posting, you know, about 30% of my items from eBay over to there. And it has really helped me to come up with a system as far as like inventory goes. And if something sells on one platform, how quickly I need to go and take it off of another platform. So I feel like 
this past year, I've really gotten a grasp on what it's going to take to have items cross posted and what all that entails. I would recommend you start with one like I did and kind of get a grasp for that before you go and try to cross post on every single platform. Um, but in 2020, I am committing to learning what sells on the different platforms. So far, um, you know, Grailed is more of like a streetwear, menswear. So I've learned a little bit of that this week. Mercari, I'm liking Mercari. Um, it is pretty simple and almost like Poshmark, I guess, but you don't have to share. So I'm committing to learning about these different platforms and cross posting items that belong in those categories. So like Etsy, you can only sell vintage or handmade. So I'm not going to go and list a pair of American Eagle jeans that I just picked up on Etsy because that's not allowed and it wouldn't sell there even if it was allowed anyways. Something else I want to do as far as organization goes is really dial down with my inventory system. I did a video like way back closer to when I started YouTube a couple months ago. Um, I think my voice is a little shaky in it. I was still like getting the jitters out from being on camera. I will um, put a little link up here if you would like to go see that video, but my inventory system is pretty much the same. But what I would like to do for 2020, even though I feel like I am pretty organized, if you go in the video, um, my larger items like my coats and things like that are hung up in a closet um, or they are in different bins. I have those bins labeled, but like the closets I don't have labeled and then my shoe racks aren't labeled. So anytime shoes sell, I have to go onto my shoe racks and like go through all the racks to try and figure out where the shoe is. And it's harder than you would think. I mean, your eyes skip over things. So what I would like to do for 2020 is dial down into my inventory system to get even more detailed and put into my custom SKUs like which shoe rack my shoes are on, which closet my bulk items are in, and really dial down and have every single thing labeled so it is so much easier to find. And lastly, and I think that this is the most important tip I could give you guys is to hire out certain tasks if you can. I have hired out, you know, helping with drafting. I have actually got somebody who's off and on been helping me with pictures. If you can find somebody to help you that is affordable, more than likely what you're going to be paying them will multiply into your business and you're probably going to wonder why you didn't do it before. Um, one of those for me recently is I have been trying out some of the different um, sharing like VAs for Poshmark. If you don't list on Poshmark, you probably don't know, but in order to keep consistent sales, you have to constantly share your items into a feed to keep them active. And it can be really time consuming, especially if you have hundreds to thousands of listings in your closet, but it is necessary to make sales on Poshmark. I don't want to spend 30 minutes to an hour every day sharing my items, but I do want to have sales on Poshmark. So I have been researching different methods that I could use to hire somebody out to do sharing for me. And I have found one that I think is going to work out. I tried them out for a week and I might do a video on it. I'm going to continue using them just to see how it goes. Um, but I have tried a couple different ones now and I have also considered just hiring like a regular VA off of uh, like Fiverr or something like that. Um, but I think that this website's really going to work for me. So currently I am paying $25 a week for someone to share my Poshmark closet three times a day. And they're also doing community shares for me. And that has been such a blessing. And I don't know why I didn't do that before because when they're sharing, and I'm not, you know, trying to do it myself and forgetting about it. I'm actually making more sales. So that $25 is like, it's just so cheap to me because I'm getting more sales from it. So if you have a Poshmark closet, definitely would recommend looking into those. Some of them have free trials. And again, I might do a video on the one that I'm using because I really do like it. But I'm going to continue using it for a little bit longer, longer than a week, just to make sure that I'm accurately representing what they're offering. Now, I believe 
automating things or hiring out is important in your personal life too because if you've got personal life tasks and you can hire them out that just means you can spend more time on your business and be less stressed one of the things that i really like to do is i place pickups for my grocery orders so a lot i don't know where you live but a lot of grocery stores do this now where you can order all of your groceries online somebody else selects the items for you in the store and then all you have to do is drive to the store park in the parking lot call them they come out with all your groceries and you're done usually there is a very minimal fee and oftentimes um, a couple the first couple that you do are free of charge as far as the fee goes so that's something that i use um in my personal life i've used that for a really long time i love doing that and i want to find more things like that so that i can free myself up to do more things that are going to grow my business. So I am committing to finding things like that, um, not only in business, but in personal life to free myself up to grow. One thing in particular that I am really looking for to hire out is someone to cross post for me. And I do realize that there are different sites um, that do the cross posting for you or they're an app you can use to help you cross post i just haven't found them to be useful to me or as quick as i would like them so i either need to find a way to be faster at them or hire somebody to do it so in conclusion anything that you can do to free yourself up and have somebody else do those tasks for you as long as it's an affordable purchase and makes sense for your business is totally worth it. This is probably my biggest goal in 2020 is figuring out how to free myself up to do the more important things. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed hearing some of the strategies that I plan on using in 2020. Hope there were some takeaways for you. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what your plans are for 2020 because I would love to learn something from you and incorporate it into my routine. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you next time.